welcome to Lenny Love's Cooking Corner, an affiliate of Lenny C's Food Review. Um, first of all, this is going to be one of the first of our Running for Rona series because we're going to call it that because naturally you can't, you know, enter kitchens to get you the quality shots that you're used to seeing from our review show or a restaurant. So with that being said, thank goodness I had a little lot of whipping in the kitchen. You know, we're kind of nice in the kitchen and we'll be able to showcase that with you guys. So we're going to keep the, keep the shots coming and keep the food coming and supply you guys even in these tough times. And with that being said, you know, we kid around with running from Rona, but on a serious note, if any of you or your loved ones have been affected by Corona, our hearts will go out to you. Stay strong, get better, and we'll see you soon. Let me do a little history lesson. Um, Mexican food, have you ever been to a Mexican restaurant? Any of your favorites that you consider true, authentic Mexican cuisine? All the meat, the execution on the meats are amazing, right? You got the tinga, that's like the stewed chicken. You got the uh, El Pastor, you can do that with pork or chicken where you layer the meats with pineapple, cut it off with a spindle, kind of like how you do Mediterranean heroes. Chorizo, which is amazing. You get through all these meats, the carne asada, the pork carnitas, there's all kind of great meats that Mexicans marinate that taste amazing on their food. But the one that's poorly executed in most situations is the ground beef. And the reason why is because traditionally, we're not gonna say across the board, but traditionally, ground beef isn't, isn't authentic or true to authentic Mexican cuisine. That was adopted as it came to, as uh, Mexicans entered into the US and we kind of did a fusion. So you may not know this, but Taco Bell and the ground beef Mexican idea actually began with a Mexican woman in San Bernardino, San Bernardino, California, called Lucia Rodriguez. Back in the 30s, Lucia had a, a, a restaurant called the Mitla Cafe, M-I-T-L-A. They were very known by the locals. Everyone ate there from politicians to local clergymen to local workers. It was the spot to meet, have great conversation, eat great food. Everyone knew about it. Now, Lucia one day, the rumor is, is that she ran out of all of her authentic ingredients. So what she did was she took what she had. And that's usually how great dishes are made. You look around, take whatever you have available and you go from there. I call it freestyle in your dishes. She had ground beef, tomatoes, and cheddar cheese. And what she did was, instead of the traditional corn tortillas that are flat with the top and sprinkled on top, she took the corn tortilla seasoned her ground beef, placed it inside, and flash fried it in a pan on both sides. Added maybe lettuce, but definitely tomato, and she called it Tacos Dorados. And I'm not sure if Doritos might have stole a little piece of that too. We're not gonna point fingers at the Doritos. The tacos were a huge hit. They were 10 cents. The line would wrap around the corner. Now, here's the kicker. There was a gentleman across the street that owned a hot dog and burger spot. His name was Glenn Bell. Oh, that sounds familiar. Glenn saw the, uh, the craze over Lucia's food and her tacos. So, and he saw the crowds and it kind of made him want it. Glenn befriended everyone in the restaurant he could, Fa family of the restaurant, friends, and eventually started working in the restaurant to be able to see all the restaurant secrets. Uh -huh. Glenn saw the future of Taco Bell, well, which he didn't know the name was going to be at that point, but he knew not only the Mexican community, but everyone would love those tacos. Once Glenn got the recipe, he goes and opens his own restaurant. I forgot what it's called, something Bell's Tacos and something. You can look it up. It was such a big hit, he opened over 100 restaurants in a couple of years, and then hence the name changed to Taco Bell. So Glenn kind of, Glenn robbed Lucia, man. I hope Glenn is paying Lucia a little bit back or her family. But in San Bernardino, California, the actual Meat La Cafe is still open to this day. And they are the true recipe of where Taco Bell's crunchy tacos came from. That's when they were invented because before it was never crunchy in that shape. Maybe a tostada, a flat shape, but not in that shape. And that is your history on ground beef entering true authentic Mexican cuisine. 
I know guys, it's a lot, but I hope you appreciated that because it's a lot of history behind what you eat and you don't always realize that. But that's why the ground beef doesn't taste as good in the Mexican restaurants. It's not an original. But I'm gonna show you how to amp that taste up because you know I'm nice in the kitchen. And I'm gonna show you guys that. And you know what I'm about to say too, crew. It's time to eat! Time to eat! So True Crew, as you can see here, you know, it's not too complicated. These are your main culprits for making the best homemade taco meat you can. Uh, first, we're going to add some, well, this is chipotle, ground chipotle powder. I actually prefer the canned chipotle that is actually wet with the uh, smoked jalapenos inside. A lot of people don't know, uh, chipotle peppers are basically jalapenos that have been slow smoked. For a long time that's why they have the darker more savory type of uh, texture of course you know this guy regular sea salt we're gonna add a little chili powder for a little more depth and extra level of flavor of course you can't have mexican flavored meat without garlic being added come on relax and cumin is a very uh wide known mexican spice or flavor and that goes great if you never had cumin make sure you buy it and smell it once you smell it, you'll definitely understand what kind of level of flavor it has. As a matter of fact, I'm going to test the schnoz right now because the schnoz is always working. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's almost smoky and tangy. It's weird. There's nothing like cumin. Nothing like it. And that's why it only goes in certain dishes. Oh, and also let's get the... Let's grab you guys that uh, chipotle. Show you what the chipotle looks like. And here is... This is the... I guess the saved version of the chipotle peppers uh, you can see them in there this, i don't have the can that i originally used but i always save it because it's so strong but you can see inside let me try to show you guys you can see that smoke those smoke jalapenos in there that's all they are but they add so much flavor and be careful they're very spicy and they're whole so depending on which type you buy make sure you cut them down and uh taste add them uh, in small amounts because you can easily overpower your dish with those guys. This is the bang. I'm going to add just enough to make all these items merry. And first guys, we're going to start by uh, prepping the onion. There's really not a lot to prep with this dish. If you you know, impressed for time and you have the ingredients, this might be one of the easiest you can make. Um, I like to start by peeling the edges off of the onion, discarding that. Here. You know some of y'all's hair look like that when y'all wake up, but we're not gonna talk about you guys because I think I, you know, it might be mine. It might be mine also. You never know. Never know. All right. So first, let's cut off y'all's morning hair. This is your morning hair. Goodbye. We don't need that. Uh oh. See, y'all left hair in the. And what I like to do is just cut it down the middle. Well, you know what? No, yeah, cut it down the middle. And I'm going to show you guys how to dice it up without uh, having to go through too much work. First, let's get the skin out of here. All right. The easy way to make the cubes or dice onions without too much work is you cut, cut it in half to where you see the long side. And now that you have the long side, what you do is lay it flat and don't cut all the way through. Cut as close to the edge as you can with the width that you're looking for. So let's, let's let me show you. And you can see if you come up to the top. You can see I'm not cutting it all the way through. I'm just getting very close to that edge piece. See? Okay, so now you turn it sideways. Bam! You have nice things. And don't cut yourself on the edge. It's slippery. That's diced. And then now when you get to the piece that hadn't been cut all the way through, just turn it back top side. Bam! And instead of having to ba 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 and do all that for show, we just keep it nice and smooth here on Lenny C's full review because we <laughs> keep it smooth for you. 
You know, we're not being extra guys. We just want you to watch and be comfortable, you know. Have your nice beverage, depending on your age, you know. I like to sip fine wine, you know. Oh, trying to get me to get my tips on TV. You won't get my tips. All right, so now that the onions are diced, that's really the hardest part. The rest is ground beef. That's going to break down in the, in the uh, skillet. Well, I'm going to show you how to make sure your beef doesn't ball up and turn into the lines that it's uh, shaped like already. I'm going to show you how to stew that down to where it's actually nice and fine like the restaurants. Similar to Taco Bell, but a lot realer. So let's go. Let's get this. Now that we're done prepping, which is, is it, let's, let's get started cooking. So I wanted to show you guys. I want to show you guys, once you have this ground beef mixture in place, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, one thing you can do, which I love, is tostadas, if you have some uh, refried beans. Um, I could also show you how to make refried beans. They're very easy. You can make refried black beans, where you mush them down with seasoning and a skillet, a little oil and butter, and oh my goodness, they're amazing. Never had that brand, but these tostadas are real good. You know, get you some chips for nachos. Uh, you can make burritos or soft tacos which is the real version, but they would do it with corn tortillas versus flour. And then you have your shredded cheese, whatever brand you like, whatever you really, uh, you know, which one you appreciate. Then also we have the uh, pickled jalapenos. I love those on my nachos with diced onions, with that meat and cheese. Lettuce, little guac, ah oh, man, cut it out. You gotta relax. And then I always get too saucy. I'm always too saucy with them. You know, I keep the sauce coming. We have the, let me click on that. We have the La, Costen, La Costeña, green salsa, tomatillo sauce. And then we have the Rojo La Costeña, Mexican sauce, or tomato version. I like to keep it saucy. This is actually the healthiest part of this, this with the onions. Jalapenos, they're, they're pretty good too. So yeah, I just want to make sure you guys understood it. You can see that you can go whatever you want to go with this. I'm just showing you the base of what makes all this great. So let's get back to it. We're gonna cut some, oh, we have a surprise guest. Hello, Mia. who are you in Lenny Love's Cooking Review Kitchen Corner? Mia. Mia, Mia, how are you today? Good. So are you ready to try some Mexican food out? Yes. Uh, via Lenny Love's Kitchen? Yes. All right, so we're gonna uh, make sure we get that going for you and uh, please keep those those dirty hands away. No, I'm just kidding. Wash your hands, cause you just grabbed your foot. See, we wait, we're making sure we, here we go. See that? And those dishes in the background are clean, guys. Lenny Love took care of that. All right, so we'll see you soon, Mia. We'll probably see you eating. Okay. All right. All right, now lettuce. What I like to do is I wash it off before I use it, but I'm gonna show you a nice tip to help you preserve your lettuce life. You see these outer leaves? You don't rip them off and throw them away. What you do is you keep them there temporarily, but let's rinse off. Okay, so now that it's good and rinsed off, you know, this is clean, just dabbed it dry. I'll cut it kind of in half, but don't cut it all the way through this piece. Kind of go to the side. And now, what you do is, so the back, you know, bacteria and everything normally is going to, this is going to start trying to decay in the middle. So to preserve that, you keep your old flap that you rinsed and you cover it up as a protective barrier. And what happens is naturally now as this, you know, decays from, you know, being a fresh vegetable, you've covered up the part that you want to actually eat. And now you have this free protective leaf that came with your packet for free. <laughs> now let's go ahead and make some nice, nice cuts. You know what? I'm going to go sideways. Yeah. It with some nice strands. I like my lettuce thin and in strands. Uh-oh. Uh I thought we would need the big boy. Okay, so what we have here is about a pound. You could do like a pound and a half to two pounds of ground beef. Um, I actually have, you see the different colors in my beef because one of them is 93.7 and another is 80.20. Ooh, that's too hot. Ooh, that's 
too hot, guys. And with ground beef, all you do is just keep pressing it and moving it as it's cooking. And it won't become the hard shape that it already is. It'll just be a warmer temperature for the rest to almost melt. So make sure you keep it moving. Uh -oh, hold on. There we go. Break it. And another technique too is once it gets to a certain texture where it gives you the right amount of pushback, you use the flattening technique with your spoon or spatula. And I'll show you guys that soon. But I just wanted to get it to the right temperature. It's a little too hot initially. See, now you're getting that texture where it's melting because part of it's cooked and part's not. So now you get that melting, keep moving around texture. There we go. And since I'm using 80 20, definitely going to do some straining. Uh, normally, with that 93 7, you don't need to strain. Maybe a little bit or none at all. Keep this moving. See how I was getting mushy? Make sure when it's mushy. There we go. Now it's time to use the flattening technique. This gives you the small granules of meat versus the big chunky ones. The chunky ones don't pull in the flavor like they should. And a lot of people don't realize, like, I've even heard, like, it sounds like it may not be a big deal that you experience cook, cooks, but a lot of times people are like, man, how do you get it that fine? It's, mine is just those strings or it's the little balls. You have to make sure while it's cooking that you keep it moving. You see how it's turned into these small granules? And they're going to get even smaller when I add a little water. But you got to keep them moving. There they go. And this is a matter of two minutes. You see it? Didn't take long at all. And I season the first time. I season after the first straining. I don't waste seasoning to pour it out, you know? So once we get this to the right texture, we're gonna strain and come right back for seasoning. But already you can see in, in a matter of seconds, that, that meat is already very uh, small granules for lack of a better term, you know? All right, yeah, so while you weren't looking, I added another pack of uh, ground beef. I realized I didn't have enough. The fastest way to cook a frozen pack of ground beef is to put it in a hot skillet and keep scraping it as it melts. And in literally 10 minutes, you'll have an unpacked, a fro unfrozen pack of ground beef that you don't have to wait to thaw out. So now what we're gonna start with is let's back out. All right, so now I'm gonna start with my seasoning. I always like start out with my salt. Bam. Mm -hmm. Not too much, but that's the salt at the taste. Garlic. And we have the chili powder. Add a nice little bold depth to it. Not much. That secret. That secret. Oh, that cumin. Y'all see me get burned real quick. And just a little bit of this chipotle powder. Because we're also gonna add the wet chipotle. Okay. 
as I said, be careful with these guys. They are spicy and strong. I think I'm going to add one big one. And if I can get some of this juice out of here, that would be great. Oh, yeah, we got some juice coming. Ooh, that's the secret, guys. Make sure you get the canned chipotle peppers. Okay? That's going to give you that nice, authentic flavor. So make sure you remember that. I said that's the secret. Okay? All right. Now let's stir that around. Oh, let's break, make sure you break up that chipotle pepper, but it's naturally going to break up when I add the water. So break up that chipotle pepper real nice. Stir this around. Okay. Alright, so now we're about ready for some onion. And make sure you save some onion for your final uh, to have them raw on top of your actual dishes. So we're going to make sure we save a good amount of those. And I know you're thinking, like, man, that looks dry. I know. But we want these flavors to just stick to each other and absorb and dry in. That way when we add the water, it just gives it a more of a texture. Everything's simmer. Let those onions sweat down a little. And in a few moments, we'll be adding our water. And guys, I'll show you a little trick to adding water without using another utensil. All you do is turn your top upside down and put some water in it. Have a strong wrist for your balancing act because it's going to try to do that. Put it over pot, flip it, bam. And I like to add what's called a top full. Ooh, see that? It looks like we need one more top, guys, because I really want this to simmer and incorporate all these flavors we added. So I'm going to get maybe a half a top to a top more. Um, you want to make sure that you cover the meat mixture because it's going to pull, the water is going to pull the flavor off of the beef and it's all in the water. So you make sure you have all of the beef under the water so that as the water evaporates, those flavors dry back into the meat. And that's really the secret. Great flavors mixed with the right texture. To and that's also going to tenderize that meat back down too. So I advise you leave this on like a low, in between medium and low, for at least 30 minutes. You can do it faster, but if you do it faster, your flavors aren't going to be as well good and your texture won't be there as nicely as it's supposed to. This should literally almost feel like uh, the texture of like something that's mushy. It's okay. That's why we added water. Mostly, Most of the time with the ground beef dishes, you don't add water because you don't want the soggy feel. The taco meat is okay to be soggy as long as you have that meaty seasoned taste and that's what we're going to provide. So yeah, let's put the top on this. We're going to let this go slow for about, I, I like to go an hour if I have enough time. <clears throat> but uh, let that simmer slow and we'll check back in and taste it after it's absorbed some of that evaporated water. Make sure our textures and season is right and then we'll season the taste afterwards. Be right back soon. Let's check it out in a minute. Chew crew, I almost forgot one of my most important ingredients. Oh, look at that. One of my most important ingredients I forgot. Dice up a tomato, Roma tomato. Cut out the white insides and dice it up so you don't get any of the white flesh. That's usually a little stale and more earthy tasting. Cut off the white insides, dice up one or two tomatoes and make sure you add it. 
they're so soft you can add it late and it'll still steam down to be the right texture when you're done and I know a lot of you guys are visual learners so if you couldn't follow everything I did exact you can see what what's going on here it's almost like a soupy texture when you begin add, don't worry about having a lot of water or too much because what the water is doing is, is tenderizing the meat slow by cooking it slowly the water is going to cook out and all your seasonings are going to go back in so what you want is this this is exactly what you want right here um it is okay to taste your water before you know everything's cooked in the meat's already done so you're not eating anything raw periodically while you're cooking taste your water i, I taste my juice and it tastes great because the juice is going to tell you what, what what the outcome is going to taste like so if you feel like it's a little shorter flavor add a little more you feel like it's good um, you're good to go. You feel like you added too much seasoning or salt. A little trick is to add water and pour it out. Not the meat. Add water to your to your pot and then just slightly drain it. Now it's going to take some of your flavors away from your other items, but I think that's better than too much salt. We don't want anyone in uh, at the house with swollen ankles, swollen toes. You know, the uh, hospitals are a little short staffed right now, so we don't want any blood pressure accidents on Lenny Love's Cookie Review. Visual learner alert. This is what you're looking for. You see that? Don't treat it like a quick meal. Take your time with that. Let that simmer slow. Look at the onions. See how the onions and the tomatoes just, mm, you know what it's doing. It's, mm, we call that, mm, mm. Look at that. See, you see how it's changing? The consistency is changing. This is what you're looking for. All right, guys, so the crowd has asked for it. We're going to show you guys how to make some black beans. Well, some refried beans. We're going to use refried black beans because that's all we have. But, uh, hey, guys. Fingers. Stop me. But, uh, yeah, you, you normally make them with the white pencils. They start with a good amount of little butter. I take some back. I take a lot back. A little bother. I would say about an eighth of a six. Then we're gonna have our lovely assistant Mia add our beans. We have a can of black goyas. And that is after be careful. That is after draining them. I drain and rinse my beans. Doing it. And all you're gonna do is mash and turn. And if you need, you can add water at this point. I think we're gonna add some water. Do we need a cup of water? I'm gonna use a top of water. So you have to be a skilled chef to use a top of water. <laughs> Hold on. Chop There we go. Oh, the water went in there. Yep, it'll dry. <laughs> and now... Oh, y'all still cooking? Yummy. Showing them the spatula smash oh. technique. Ooh, your refried beans look amazing, Mia. What do they what do they call me? Testaros. No, it's tostadas. Tostada. Testaros. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we've reached the right consistency, guys. Look at that. I'ma just cook a little water out. Because you can see the water. Anytime, zoom in. Anytime the water collects in any particular area, that means you have a little more excess water you need to cook out. The drier areas. That's what you're looking for. But because we have this puddle right there, that lets us know even if we stir it, it's slightly too wet. See how you don't even have to stir it to see it's slightly too wet? So you mm -hmm. mat it back down, get everything back in the juice. Look, mat it down. Get back in there. Get back in there. Mat it down back in the juice and just let those puddles cook out. When those puddles dry up, you have reached Lenny Love's Cooking Corners 
taco meat consistency. Taco meat consistency. And you can see here, Ooh, we still cooking with a spatula. We nice with it. But look at your consistency now. That's that nice paste. Refried beans should give you a nice paste texture. And don't over dry them because they're starchy. So if you over dry them, you're going to be stuck with a lot of dry mouth. You might need some water. But these, look at that. That's the perfect consistency. Nice and pasty. So we're going to let these actually just sit in the pot and simmer very slowly. We've, these are pretty much cooked. And we're going to show you how to add these beans to your tostada. Or as Mia pronounces it, test. And we're going to show you how that comes together. Alright guys, so I just wanted to show you one last time. This is the final texture that you are looking for. The puddles have dried up. But it's just enough puddle to disperse back out into the meat. Look at this. See that? Now you have the consistency we're looking for. The vegetables have completely cooked into the meat. The water's cooked into the meat. The seasoning has cooked into the meat. So now you have this loveliness that's just so infused that you can't run from it. And I think we're done because I don't want to lose any more of this moisture. I want you to see this texture when we put it on this food. And also, if you look at the beans, the beans are ready to be stirred. And as you can see, they're done as well. They're thicker, they're more of that pasty texture you're looking for. You keep moving them around and they don't burn. Now you have all that flavor and a paste. You just can't overdo it because it's very much a carbohydrate and thick. That's why you never overcook it. We're going to put the top back on that so that it retains as much moisture as it can. And it's time to plate these plates. <laughs> it's time to put the plates together. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's time to... Um, yeah, it's time to eat. Good. So now what we're going to do, guys, we're going to make two tostadas. Or tostadarias, according to me. I'm going to put it there and there. And then we're also going to prep our nachos. And when I tell you, listen, they are not endorsing me. And I'm not endorsing them, but I am. This brand of tortilla chips, if you find these, if you're in the Charlotte area, go to Compare Foods. This chip takes you somewhere else. You never had a texture and a freshness from a chip in a bag. It tastes like it come out of the grease. The bubbles in it, you will crunch and taste fresh flavor, not dry, uh, 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 preserved flavor. No. We're going to prep these nachos, prep the tostada. So turn your oven on broil because they, it needs to be prepared for what we're about to do. We're going to take our bean paste with the spatula and start with a small layer on each tostada. Not too much. Beans have a lot of weight. Don't overweigh your uh, Mexican food with beans. Otherwise, you're going to be sleeping, drinking tequila and beer, and then it's going to be Coronas involved. And we hope it's just the right one. Just you take a nice sprinkle of the meat. Now the meat's wet, don't get too much. Just sprinkle it around. Sprinkle, hold on. Spread it. Sparingly, guys, because it's a lot of flavor in here if you season it right. Don't weigh down to your tostadas with uh, excess toppings because we're gonna add some light cool toppings after these heat toppings. And make sure everything meshes perfectly. If you get too greedy, things get too heavy, and things get too soggy. We don't like soggy. We want these chips to maintain their uh, integrity. Mm. Hello, man. So now it's time for fresh underarm vegetables. Who's smelling like an underarm? No, just joking, guys. Fresh onions. Because we don't mind heating those up a little bit and dice them very small. These, let's heat up these jalapenos. Mm. We're gonna heat up a couple of these jalapenos for the tostada. We're gonna do it right. We're not gonna run away from this flavor and this heat. Pickled means vinegar. Vinegar and jalapenos, man, that's love. 
Okay, guys, so we just pulled out the toasted tostadas on broil. You can see the pickle jalapenos are dried out. The cheese and the meat, don't overcook the tostada. Everything is nice and fresh and warm. Onions cooked in, whatever your hard ingredients are. Now, let's add some of that work. First, what we're gonna have is some fresh squeezed lime. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm, just enough drips. Not too many drips, just enough drips. <laughs> now we're gonna add some fresh. You know what, before we do that, we're gonna add the La Costeña. Or, if you prefer it green, the La Costeña Tomatillo, right? Not too much. We're gonna do, me and me are gonna have one tomatillo and one red. Oh, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Bam. Let's do our red. Chip tooth. Chip tooth. I'm not gonna tell you who ate the piece when they broke off. A rojo, a rojo, a rojo. Bam. Right? Not too much. We're not gonna sog them up because they're tostadas. Everyone that has experience with tostadas knows that they're a thin chip. You don't want to overdo it. I'm going to sprinkle a little of our nicely chopped lettuce. Nicely chopped lettuce. And guys, uh, you know what? I'm going to give up some secrets tonight. This is only for you, Chew Crew. This is only for you. Mia says hello. But never be too ashamed. <laughs> See, you go to the grocery store and they have all oh, the Taco Bell sauce. And the, no, 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 no. La Costeña is better than that. But when you actually get extra sauce and save it, hot, fire. Do not put this. Don't, do not put that one. Diablo. Hold on. Let's, Diablo. Do not put that on, one on. And I even, not. you know, for you weak ones, mild. You know, we have awful, don't be ashamed of saving that for this because now you're gonna watch that real finish. That, uh, Hold on, Mia, watch my drizzle. Hold on, Mia, we showing our drizzle. Uh, you have to drizzle properly. If you drizzle incorrectly, your meal is ruined. Uh, you must drizzle properly. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Uh, nephew, did you say you would like to try the Diablo? Yeah, I wanna try the Diablo. Okay, chip tooth Diablo. Mm, chip tooth Diablo. Let's go, uh -huh, uh -huh. No, drizzle. No Diablo for me and Marie's. I got you, baby. Bam. Mm. You see these tostadas? You know what? You know what? I'm feeling like showing love. I'm feeling like showing love. We're going to sprinkle some more. We're going to sprinkle. And a little sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Daddy, what about the... Um... Oh, baby, I got you. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Let's go. Time to eat, guys. We got to eat these tostadas before we get to the rest. Let's go. Before that was something that's supposed to be stylish, cool. I've been in sauce. Keep on. So what's up, nephew? What's up? Huh? You ready for your tostada? Mia, yeah. you got your tostada? You ready to eat? Now let's go. Ooh, I was got Ooh. some weight. Oh, mm, a little bit. Yeah, I don't need it. Dad, can I show mm, mine? Yes, yours. Mm. Mia has the. Mm. Mia has the, for the simpler, simpler palate. Hold on. How you feeling? Mm. Huh? I need to get my own plate. Hold on. Oh, you feeling? Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I like that response. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know what you're thinking. No, this is not Lenny Love's little brother. We clean the face. How are you? <laughs> that's nah. my brother, and that's my dad now. Yeah, you know, you know. Don't die. Mmm. That be it. Down. That Diablo crazy. Mmm. 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 The meat. I mean, how does the hotness, the um, the beans, the corn, the jalapeno, good too. That vinegar mm -hmm. to go with the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. mm. The yeah. lettuce adds a nice little crunch. The pickle jalapeno, the the raw onions that we baked in with the cooked onions. Oh man. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -mm. How you doing, man? Good. You feeling it with the bean? Mia had the bean, meat, and cheese variety. No sauce. She's not saucy. Unless it's ketchup. <laughs> How you feeling? Oh, he wants up. Mm -hmm. And barbecue. Let me do my barbecue. Barbecue. I like 
barbecue, mm -hmm. sweet, sour, and um, ketchup. Okay, barbecue, sweet, sour, and ketchup is her uh, favorite. Mm. That's the mm -hmm. honey mustard. Look at her. Look at her. Mm. Now, let's be honest. I know we got a lot going on, mm -hmm. but the consistency of the meat is like better it's than way top. different than everybody mm -hmm. else. Homemade tacos be the crumbly, chewy. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Stew that hamburger meat in the Mexican spices and vegetables. It got that flavor and it's still moist. You know I this, like that. That's, that's you know this, guys. You gotta wash your hands and every single day. It's because today we have the virus. So no, no, no. We don't have it. It's in the world. In the world. In the world. In the world. I mean, in the world. Yeah, yeah. Got you, Mike. But you're right. You're mm -hmm. very right. You're very, wash your hands every single day. Wash your feet mm -hmm. every single day. Rump. Four every single day. Every, every single day. day. <laughs> Every single day. Every single day. Mm. To start a going already. She's working on hers and mine is you know what it is. Actually, can I have mm. the mild sauce? Mm -hmm. I, I, got, mm -hmm. see, I knew you were sauce. I told you it was dry. You need some sauce, girl. You gotta sauce that thing up. I, I knew you were saucy. Mm hmm It's saucy over here. Mm-hmm. Left a little piece over there, but it's all right. Mm. Next, guys, it's time to get to the nachos. Daddy, this tastes real good. Mm -hmm. But my nachos, I really don't want beans. Some, I know a lot of you guys like it. Add it if you need from the refried beans we made. I just like everything spread even. Not too lumpy. Take your time and spread it properly, you know? Mm -hmm. Ooh. So we're gonna bring our broiled nachos over to the counter. Woo! Let's add our nah we do. Uh uh. Pickle jalapenos. Try to keep the juice off. We'll keep our juice right, you know. Bam. Get the juice right. Bam. Bam. Splat it. Cat. Cat. Cow. Yeah. Flat it. You know, I know how to. Sometimes if you make the wrong sound, it don't spread properly. Queso Blanco. Add a little, hold on. Add a little half and half. Oh, hey guys! A little butter. Guys! Okay guys, here we are with our dressed nachos we have our jalapenos black beans two types of shredded cheeses we're now gonna add our pico de gallo mix which is the cilantro and diced onions our diced tomato okay Last but not least, the melted queso. Mm. You see it.
Now, if you didn't tell your drive through window person that Taco Bell, you need more sauce before you drove off, it's okay. That's what I do. <laughs> or go in and get my own handful. But if you don't, use La Costaña. It's, it's very good. Flavorful, spicy. Matter of fact, I think that's what I need. You know, I like that drip. Mmm, some pickle jalapeno. Mmm. 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 Look at him. Mmm. You can't fake that. Mmm. You eat like that, ain't no fake. I feel what you mean about this side. I'm gonna wet up this side. Mm -hmm. No, I'm gonna leave this side dry for somebody that might come late. Mm -hmm. We're gonna stay on the same side and be a loving family, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me and my family stay on the same side. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 And we don't have napkins and mm -mm. forks on purpose because sometimes mm -mm. good food is just raw and real. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> but the taco meat, you gotta do that part right. Without the taco meat being proper, none of this would be good. Mm. Mm -hmm. That boy getting busy. Mm. La Costanya. Hold on, back. La Costanya. You need to get that sponsorship, right? Because you know Lenny Love got nothing but love for La Costanya. Because a little bit of that in the corner. Hold on. A little bit of that in the corner. Mm -mm. Talking about some flavor added with those pickled jalapenos. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Before you get in there. Because you know if your drizzle ain't right, your, your life ain't right. If your drizzle ain't right, your life ain't right. <laughs> That's how it be. <laughs> I'm going to drizzle some fire on there because we ain't never been scared of that little pressure. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh. oh, the fire. Oh, the fire scared us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was big so you know I got a good ventilation system <laughs> dry mm -hmm. bro you made me laugh nah B I been laughing too you come know on, come on, man. but the nose they dry cuz you know what I'm saying <laughs> head ain't itching <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't scratching my head the whole time got moist you know what I'm saying <laughs> Back in the day, I've been all up in here eating this. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, so we finished up, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the Stay At Home Lenny Sees Food Review affiliate, Lenny Loves Cooking Corner. Mm -hmm. We're going to see you guys soon. Stay positive, hold it down, stay solid, and love your family. All right, guys, what are we going to do? We're going to say peace. Peace. Catch y'all soon, man. Appreciate the love. You already know what to do. We're not going to yell to you what, what you need to do to show support. We love you guys. Peace. Peace. Nah. 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 We'll do that. <laughs> Make sure you wash your hands. Make sure you wash your hands every single day. Yeah. Wash Talk them hands. You heard me and Marie. Talk to them. Every single day. Get that knowledge. You know, we love y'all, man. Let's go. And make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click subscribe the bell. to that's right. Subscribe to and click the bell. You better subscribe right and click. Here and right here. That's right. right, here and, right here. and over there, oh. everywhere. Love y'all.
Love you. Peace. Peace out. Yo voy a cantar esta canción. Yo voy a cantar esta canción para mi gente.